How's it going? We're going to pray real quick. Father God, we thank you this morning. When we come before you humbled, God, I pray that this will be a time that we can enter into worship and put all, put all things aside this morning, God. Put school aside, put, put any struggles we have before you, God, and just worship you freely.
oceans eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me oh how he loves us so oh how he loves us how he loves us so sing that again oh how he loves us so oh how he loves us how he loves us so as we are his portion and he is our prize Drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes. If his grace is an ocean, we're all sinking. So heaven meets earth like an unforeseen kiss, and my heart turns violently inside of my chest. And I don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think. The way that he loves us, oh, how he loves us, oh, how he loves us, oh, how he loves us, how he loves us, oh, how he loves us. God, we thank you this morning. I pray that we will just know your love, God, and you'll show it to us, God, and you'll keep revealing yourselves to us as we dive in and try to just discover more about you and your grace, God. It's in your name we pray. Amen. to hear it. <laughs> okay, let's pray. Lord, keep me and my boyfriend together forever because I know you want me to be happy. Lord, please pay, make my mom say I can go to Betty's party because I know you want to make me happy. Lord, I know you want me to be happy, so let me be cheerleader. Lord, I know you will forgive me for making that dumb choice because you want me to be happy. Lord, thank you for understanding that right now I just want to be happy and for being patient with me because you know that I will follow your ways later in my life. Lord, forgive me, that was not real. Okay, that was absurd, correct? And I hate to admit this to you, but I remember very distinctly praying prayers exactly like that as a teenager. I'm not kidding you. I did. I was going to marry that boy. We were going to be together forever. I was a cheerleader. I had it all going on. I was a good athlete, you know. And this is, these were my prayers when I was a teenager. <clears throat> and do you know why those were my prayers? 
because I didn't really know him. I knew about him. I went to church every Sunday, had been since I was a baby. I knew all about him. I'd grown up in, in a Baptist church, so I had been taught all kind of things about him. So I knew about him, but I didn't know him. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about a subject I am so passionate about. If you've been in my class in speech or world history or in whatever form or fashion, you've probably heard me talk about that. And I am passionate about my quiet time with the Lord. And we're going to talk today about what that looks like. Okay? And I do want to warn you that you're probably going to go away from here with more questions than you have answers because this is a personal issue between you and God. But I just want to give you some hints and suggestions and let you know what God has shown me. First of all, you have to be diligent about seeking what works best for you. I don't believe that anyone can tell you how it's done. You have to want you have to have this desire. You have to want to move beyond where you are now to truly knowing Jesus as your Savior, yes, but also as your friend, knowing him intimately. I love that word intimately because our relationship with him is supposed to be intimate, and it's just between me and him. That's what an intimate relationship is. Now, does that happen by praying for an hour? Well, I fell asleep after 15 minutes tops. Reading the Bible for an hour, I would get through a whole page and have no clue about what I had just read or what God wanted to teach me from there. Uh, reading a verse and writing down what it means to me. Okay, what if your verse that day is 2 Chronicles 20, 31? I want to read that to you. So Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah. He was 35 years old when he became king of Judah. And he reigned in Jerusalem 25 years. And his mother's name was Azrubah, daughter of Shilhai. Okay, well, you know what that leaves me with? Lord, how on earth do I pronounce these names? Okay, so... I cannot say that any of those three things won't work for you. It's not about what I'm telling you to do. It's about what you can do to become intimate with God. And so here's some things that I've learned. Um, I, I keep hearing that word deliberate. We, we, you know, God really has been speaking to our administration, to our leadership, to our you know, all of you students about us being deliberate in everything that we do. And your journey with God and your seeking of him and your quiet time with him takes deliberate effort. Um, so I want to I I just talk to you about what I've learned since the age of 27 when I decided that I was going to have a real quiet time with, with him. And I beg you, do not wait that long. If you're not doing it yet, and I know many of you are already having a wonderful quiet time with God, but if you're not, the sooner the better. You'll be so blessed. First of all, you have to find a time that works for you and set that time in stone. Be deliberate about it, okay? You know your schedule. I know you're busy, okay? Everyone is busy. When I made the decision to be deliberate about having a quiet time with God, I had a husband, and I had three girls, four and a half, three, and one, and I was going to Texas Tech. So I'm just here to tell you that there was absolutely no spare time in my day. I was a busy woman. And so I am a morning person, still am to this day. I started getting up at four, okay? And that's when I set that time in stone during that season of my life to spend my time with God. And it was worth it. Now, I get up at 5. I've been doing that for a long, long time. And uh, it's not hard for me because, like I say, I'm a morning person. I'm kind of boring at night. I fall asleep really early. But that's how God made me. Now, in the summer, I will tell you, I don't get up at 5. I get up around 7 or 7.30, and I have my quiet time first thing. So the bottom line is, I know that with the way I work and my body, you know, has the most energy and my brain is really working I need to do it first thing in the morning. So that time has been set in stone. And you know what? Don't become legalistic about it. There's going to be times 
when that just doesn't happen. Uh, I just spent two days on a leadership retreat with some of your uh, fantastic leaders, and uh, we had the best time, and I was sharing a room with Miss Sosby. Well, I didn't wake up at 5 o'clock and say, uh, Michelle, I need you to leave because I need to have my quiet time. Okay, I didn't do that to her. And Mr. Havens, all of you know that he's go, 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 go. And he keeps us going. You know, we're on a schedule. So you know what? It didn't really happen those two days. But did I hear from the Lord those two days? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because the beauty of truly knowing God and desiring to fellowship with him means that we converse with him all day long. He's my faithful friend. For example, yesterday uh, we were having a break, and I heard Mr. Haven say to Ms. Sosby, well, I was thinking about asking Shelly, and I said, asking me what? And he said, to speak in chapel. And I said, oh, okay, just so it's not tomorrow. And he said, it's tomorrow. And I went, oh. And he told me the topic, though, and I was like, we can do this. I can do this. And it was so cool because uh, that is a subject that I'm passionate about. I don't know that he knew that so much. But for some reason, God told him to ask me to talk about this. And um, so it was so cool because even while I was sitting listening to our speaker yesterday and taking notes and keeping up with the meeting and what was going on, God was just dropping little nuggets into my brain that I was writing things down for today. He's so faithful. He's such a great friend. Um, now, what I want to point out is that, yes, he's my friend, but I am in awe of him. And I realize that he is God Almighty. But I also know how much he loves me and wants me to spend time with him because he is my best friend. Do you go a whole day or a week or a month without speaking to your best friend? Of course you don't. We spend time with those who are important to us. We spend time with our friends. We glean from them. They glean from us. Do you know that we bless God when we spend time with him? It's not just him blessing us. It's us blessing him as well. That's why he created us. So here's what I do. All right, step one, I find that time. I found that time that works for me. I have a thankful journal. This is something that a parent gave to me years ago, and she wrote me a little note in the front, and she said, this is your thankful journal. And she said, I want you to write down whenever you think of something you're really thankful for. I want you to, to put it in this journal. Uh, one of the common characteristics about us teachers is that we are lifelong learners. And so I personally always have a Bible study going. Now, I'm not talking about going to a women's Bible study on Tuesday nights at my church. I'm talking about a personal Bible study that I have going on between me and my Lord every morning at 5 a.m. And uh, there, oh my gosh, I have, I, I cannot tell you how many wonderful, wonderful teachers there are out there who have written wonderful Bible studies that will just speak directly into your life. And so as I, as I spend time doing this Bible study, here's, here's kind of how things look. It doesn't look the same every day. Uh, I'll be working through my Bible study, and I'll be reading questions and commentaries, and I'll be looking in my Bible and researching and going back and reading some other things that God brings to my mind. I find myself stopping to pray. I find myself stopping to write something down in my thankful journal. Uh, I find myself, um, sometimes God just tells me, sit still, wait, and listen, and be real quiet. And that's not real easy for me. I'm not real quiet. <laughs> but when he tells me to, I am, because you know what? He always has something great to tell me. So it, it looks different, but, but doing the Bible study with it, that just is, it's kind of like my jumping off point, and I will promise you, it does not matter if I spend time doing that for 15 minutes or an hour and a half, and I cannot tell you how many days there are when I want to text Coach Neal and say, Coach Neal, my Bible study is wonderful this morning, so I'm going to come in about 10, you know, <laughs> because I just want to stay with it. And, uh, but I can't do that. But I, I will tell you that no matter how long I do that, he meets me and he teaches me something every single day. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the greatest tutor you will ever have. 
and he lo I know that he loves me unconditionally and teaches me how to live this life he has given me. Now, one thing I've discovered is that knowing his word is what makes my prayer life effective because I'm praying according to his will. The prayer at the beginning, of course, that was a joke. I didn't know him, but now that I know him, my prayers are very different, and they don't have to last for a whole hour. Sometimes, you know what? My prayer is just a simple, Lord, help me. And you know what? He answers that prayer. He showed that to me over and over again. I want you to think about those tough times that come, because they will. It is not God's will that we be happy all the time. It, that's not life. We're not going to learn. We're not going to grow in him. Tough times are going to come because we live in a fallen world. What are you going to fall back on? Those hours that I've spent for the last 30 years spending time with him, that's what I fall back on. That's what he reminds me of. You know, last May, May 7th, I was in bed reading and got that phone call about my mother having that wreck. And I didn't get to the hospital in time to tell her goodbye. I got to go see her, but she was gone. And, you know, the next day, I, I, well, I, I was in the hospital corridor, and I called Ms. Jacobson, and I said, I'm supposed to speak at that New Directions banquet tomorrow. I said, there is no way I can do that. And she said, oh, no problem. Uh, Ms. Hayslip uh, reassured me that she would step in. And anyway, so I'm standing there in the hall and, you know, I'm just having, you know, I'm just crying out to God, help me, help me, help me. I can't do this. I can't do this. I lost my mother. I can't do this. And that's the only way I could pray. And he said, are you going to trust me or not? You say that your favorite verse is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strength, strengthens me. Are you going to walk that out or not? And you know what? God brought that back to me. I called Ms. Jacobson back and I said, I'll be there. And I didn't sleep that night, but I was here. I can't tell you much of what I told, told anybody because it was God holding me up, strengthening me. And thank God that all those times, all those hours that he has spent pouring into my life because I've chosen to sit before him and his word in the morning, that he was able to give that to me to sustain me and strengthen me for that difficult task. And the very difficult things that have come since then. You know, I had to walk through a grieving period. But he was with me every step of the way. He's a faithful friend and he meets you when you call on him. So I want you to find what works for you. I want you to go to Mardell. Get a devotional book. A Bible study. A journal. Whatever you feel will help you to know him and his word intimately that's what you're looking for you're looking for that intimate relationship if one thing falls flat try another be diligent and deliberate about meeting with him at your set time on and he will honor that commitment i promise you he will honor that commitment and he's going to meet you right where you are remember there are seasons in your life when your quiet time with him will change accordingly you know, when I had three teenagers living in my house, three teenage females at that, whoa. My quiet time every single morning was about parenting three teenage girls in this day and age. And, you know, God would give me scriptures for them that I would, you know, on a sticky note, I'd put it on their mirror. And, you know, that was the subject of my quiet time for those years. It was perfect. God knew exactly what I needed during that time. For the last year, he's been really, really teaching me about mentoring. I've been doing a Bible study on uh, the Titus 2 woman, and it talks about how we are to mentor others, those of us that are old. And uh, it's not saying those of us that are old in years, although I am getting there. It's talking about those who are mature in the Lord and who God has taught things to and those who are continuing to learn. And, you know, in the beginning I thought that was, you know, maybe mentoring other women, uh, along with the fact that I mentor my three daughters. But um, I truly believe that God was setting me up to um, mentor the sophomore class as their advisor and to mentor 
I've always felt a calling to mentor all my students, but last spring when it was mentioned to me that my name had been put up to be the sophomore advisor, I said, heck no. I said, I am too busy. I have got your back and I've just got too much going on. I'm not going to do that. And you know what? But God kept telling me, yes, you are. What have I been teaching you all these months in this Bible study you've been doing? Mentoring. This is who I want you to mentor. And so I emailed Miss Jacobson and Coach Neal one day, and I just said, you know, I'd like to have a conversation about this. It's something I would love to do. So I'm going to recap really quick. Find a time. If the first time you pick out doesn't work, find another one. Set it in stone. Find a method that works for you. Keep at it until it becomes a lifelong habit that is more important to you than anything else you do. It's got to get to that point. And the only way anything becomes a habit is because you do it over and over and over again. And you will have to make yourself, oh, you know, I, Lord, I just, I'll spend time with you tomorrow. I'm tired. I want to go to sleep. Or, you know, Lord, I need a couple of extra hours to sleep this morning. If you will just make yourself do it anyway, it becomes a habit. And then it's no big deal. And that time with him becomes so important to you, it's just like breakfast. Or it's just like taking a shower. It's something you do because you need to. And you need him speaking into your life on a daily basis. You need to be so ingrained in his word and know what he says about you and how much he loves you. And every situation you will ever face in life, you need to know what his word says. So that when you don't have that word right there, you can fall back on it when those hard times come. I want you to remember these things. Seek him and you will find him and it brings freedom. It's not a burden. It gives you freedom to love, freedom to serve, freedom to grow in him, freedom to fail and get right back up, freedom to learn from your mistakes through his discipline, because he does discipline us, and the freedom to know him intimately. Well, who wouldn't want that? I mean, think about that. Who wouldn't want that? And when you walk with him in this personal way, you're not going to walk away from that because it's an integral part of your life. Bottom line, I'm going to read this quote that we got yesterday. It says, there is an enormous difference between growing old in the Lord and growing up in him. One is automatic and requires no effort at all, just aging. But the other is never automatic or easy. It calls for personal discipline, continued determination, and spiritual desire. Churches are full of sleeping saints who are merely logging time in God's family. Don't be that person. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for each and every student that's in this room. Teacher, administrator, father. What a blessed family to be a part of. And Lord, I just ask that just one little nugget of your truth has settled in the hearts of your children this morning, Lord. And if they can glean one thing to elevate their time with you, with you, If that's what they're needing, God, I ask that you would show them that. Father, give them hearts that seek you purely, diligently, deliberately, and bless them as they do that. And we thank you for that, God. Amen. Okay.